All right, can we start now? Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, good morning. Welcome you all to webinar two in the series of PD webinars exclusive to teachers of English at kindergarten to grade 12 throughout Vietnam using the new textbook series. Proudly brought to you by the organizing committee of the PD webinar series and um, with the support, guidance, and supports and uh, consultation from the Board of Directors and Board of Secretaries, VTSO Association or VTA, and uh, Regional English Language Office of Rilo, um, the US Embassy Hanoi, Vietnam, as well as the sponsorship from uh, VTA Rilo, uh, Longman Pearson, Vietnam, I said Clever Learn Hanoi and Talking English. My name is Nguyen Tam Chang, a lecturer at Hanoi National University of Education, and I'm the initiator of uh, this PD webinar series. Um, and also a member of the organizing committee. Um, other members are Ms. Tha Thị Mai Hương, um, Thái Nguyên University, uh, Ms. Đỗ Thị Phương Mai, my colleague at Hanoi National University of Education, Mr. Trần Quang Nam, Ho Chi Minh U University of Education, and Ms. Trịnh Ngọc Anh, Banking Academy of Vietnam, and currently a PhD student at the University of Canterbury, New Zealand. Um, thank you all the organizing committee for spending your precious time uh, organizing the webinar so far. And let me now introduce a little bit about the series of the webinar. As you can see on the slide, there are four main themes of the PD webinar series, namely ELT methodologies, using ICT in ELT, testing and assessment, and professional development. Webinar one brings a great success with the participation of Dr. Ha Van Singh as the speaker and Dr. Chen Dang Khánh Linh as the main facilitator, as well as Ms. Lê Thu Hằng, Ms. Nguyễn Thị Thu Thảo, Mr. Đỗ Mạnh Cương, and Ms. Phạm Thị Hải Ngọc as the facilitator. And today, please enjoy webinar two with Ms. Nguyễn Thị Lan Hương as the speaker of the webinar. And that brings me nicely on to the introduction of webinar two with Ms. Mai Hương. Thank you, Ms. Chang, for your introduction. Good morning, everybody. It's my great honor to be the moderator of today's webinar. Now, please let me introduce our speakers today. Our featured speaker is Ms. Nguyễn Thị Lan Hương, who is currently the Vice Director of the Department of General Administration, University of Languages and International Studies, Vietnam National University in Hanoi. She's, she was an alumnus of the International Visitor Leadership Program in 2014 and an e-teacher alumnus in 2012. Thank you so much, Ms. Nguyễn Lan Hương, for spending your precious time preparing the sharings and the pre- and post-webinar reference materials. Following the sharing from Ms. Nguyễn Thị Lan Hương are the sharings from three K-12 teachers, Ms. Hoàng Thị Thúy Quỳnh, Ms. Bùi Thị Liên, and Ms. Nguyễn Thị Thúy. It's also my pleasure to introduce our facilitators today. The main facilitator is Ms. Zhang Thị Chang, a lecturer of English at the University of Economics and International Studies. Ms. Nguyễn Đức An from Sơn La University, Mr. Phạm Đức Thuận from Hoa Lu University, Ms. Bùi Thị Liên from Ngô Gia Tự High School in Đắk Lắk, and Ms. Trần Thị Thúy Quỳnh, xin lỗi, uh, I'm sorry, and Ms. Um, Trần Thị Thúy from Đức Hợp High School. Thanks all the facilitators so much for your kind support throughout all the stages of this webinar. And now let's take a quick look at the content of the webinar too. As you can see on your screen, after this introduction, Ms. Nguyễn Thị Lan Hương, Ms. Hoàng Thị Thúy Quỳnh, Ms. Bùi Thị Liên and Ms. Nguyễn Thị Thúy are going to share their experience related to online or blended learning, followed by a discussion between the facilitators and the speaker then there will be time for questions and answers about the things related to the topic of this webinar. And after the QA session, our speaker and facilitators will present some suggestions for the follow-up activities before I give a brief summary of this webinar and provide several information on the next webinar. 
During the webinar, please feel free to interact with our facilitators using the chat box. Now let's welcome our featured speaker, Ms. Nguyễn Thị Lan Hương, and please don't forget to open the chat box for more discussion during the webinar. Ms. Nguyễn Thị Lan Hương, where are you? Excuse me, Ms. Chang, can you unmute Ms. Lan Hương, please? Yeah, Ms. Hương. Thank you, Ms. Mai Hương, for your um, introduction. Um, morning, everyone. Um, it's my honor to be here uh, today to share with you the topic about blended learning in English language teaching within uh, the topic of ICT in um, English teaching. And the focus of um, my sharing today is the um, blended course design and delivery. And um, during my presentation, there will be polls on everywhere. So please, everyone, um, look at the chat box uh, for the link to, um, to go to the uh, website called Poll Everywhere to interact with the program. And um, uh, it would be better if you use another device like your mobile phone so you can um, interact with the program uh, while viewing the results on Zoom screen. Thank you. Our participants, you can get the link um, to the poll from the chat box. So please click the link and share your answer, please. So can you see the link now? Yes. Yes, and on the screen is poll number one. I would like you to select the option that describes best your teaching setting. And we will have three minutes for this poll. Yes, I've seen the, the first response. Our secretary has posted the link to the chat box. So can you go to the taskbar and look at the chat box? Use the link to show your answer, please. Yes, we are still waiting for responses. It seems that the majority of the teachers choose uh, option A. <laughs> yes, we have one minute and 30 seconds left. So please be quick. I, I've seen someone select option C and then um, deselect it already. So So maybe the teacher regularly comes to class with their laptop or something? Yes. <laughs> Or some uh, some classroom uh, uh, equipped with one computer and projector. Yeah, that's great. It seems good that no teachers select option C and D. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are lucky, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Maybe we do not need to wait for... Yeah, um, thank you for your responses and um, uh, time is nearly up. So 
uh, through your responses here, we can see that uh, teachers um, now, uh, most of our teachers, 67% uh, are teaching in a classroom with a projector equipped by uh, the school. And um, yes, yeah, some of the classroom are equipped with uh, a computer. Uh, usually teachers bring their laptop to, uh, to the classroom to present their teaching content. Um, and teachers can sometimes access to the internet. Um, some of you, 33%, uh, uh, teaching in the setting in, in the class that your students have smartphones or their own computers. And sometimes you uh, ask them to use in some um, activities by assessing the school's Wi-Fi. Um, thank you. And we now move to the second poll. Yes, we would like uh, to know the technology tools that you are using in your teaching. So please, um, yes, within three minutes, can you please type the name of the technology tools that you are using in your teaching? Yes, I've seen the first response, quizlet.com. How about others? Please quickly type um, as many as um, the tools that you are using. Google, Google Forms, just the name of the tools, please. Mentimeters, Quizzy. Interesting, Kahoot. Any other tools, please? Sway. At Modo. Anything else? Yes, we also have live worksheets. And the word cloud um, is changing very quickly. Some of you use Teams, um, Teams and Sways, OneNote. So these are Microsoft tools. Yeah. Others are using Word. Go on, please. Okay, Skype, at Modal. I would like to see new tools. Oh, and very new to me, Miss Lanuel. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> wow, craft. Google Farms. Also. Twenty seconds left. Yeah, as you can see here, Kahoot is the most popular tool used by our teachers and then uh, comes with Google Forms, um, then Mentimeters and OneNote mm. and Creepy and Skype. Thank you, time is up. So as you can see that I see here that a lot of te uh, technological tools um, are being used by teachers in their classroom and there will be more to be shared by our teachers in this webinar. Thank you. Let me deactivate this um, call. Thank you for your responses. And here are the contents of uh, our sharing today. There will be 
three parts in um, my presentation. The first one, what is blended learning? Part two, why blended learning? And part three, which is um, the most important one, um, I think, is how to implement blended learning in your English class, um, in which I will share the steps and then um, three other teachers will um, also share their uh, practice, their experience with um, blended learning um, in certain classes, certain skills in, uh, in the different school levels. So let's go to the first part um, of my sharing. What is blended learning? So participants, can you please type um, your own definition of blended learning in the chat box? So why uh, I'm sharing my screen, um, I don't know um, why today I cannot view the chat box. So can uh, the secretary read out some of the definitions for me? Yeah, I think Nam can absolutely read some uh, answer from the chat box. <laughs> Participants, can you go to the chat box and type your answer for um, the definition of blended learning? Yes, yeah, well, um, I, I can view the chat box now, and I've seen uh, the first uh, definition from uh, Mosu Nguyen Tam Chang. <laughs> blended learning is the combination between online and offline learning. How about others? Yes, another definition from Mr. Phan Bic Thuận, blended learning is that blended with technology. Yeah, so he mentioned the use of technology um, in a class. How about others? Please give your own definition. Maybe our participants are so shy. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they are not uh, familiar with using the chat. Yeah, another definition. Yeah comes yeah. from uh, Ms. Mai Hương, our um, moderator, a combination of face-to-face -face and online learning. So you agree with uh, Ms. Tam Chang. Um, Ban Huang defines uh, BL or blended learning as a new method meeting the needs of learners' autonomy. Oh, great. Um, Lin Bui defines blended learning uh, is the using of IT or information technology to motivate students Yes, and we also have the answer from Ms. Bu Thị Thanh Loan. Yeah, can I read it to you, Ms. Lan Hương? It is sure. classroom learning and self-learning using technology tools. I think wow. self-learning is very great, right? Yeah. So thank you uh, for your definition. Um, I think that you define blended learning from different aspects. And um, um, let me show you Yes, the two definitions here um, by um, Numa and uh, Staker and Horns. And please pay attention to the highlighted words. Um, I think you all um, mention or define blended learning correctly. Um, so as you can see here, blended learning can be simply defined as the combination of face-to-face and computer assisted learning or online learning. And the way teachers combine these two different teaching modes in one single activity or course will be discussed um, further later. Thank you. We now move to the second part of um, my presentation is um, the reasons why teachers sh uh, should apply blended learning approach in their um, class. And um, Kafri and, um, oh, sorry. Um, I would like you to give your answers. Uh, give your own reasons why you should apply technology um, or blended learning in your teaching. Um, okay, and, and once again, can you please type some of the reason in the chat box? Oh, welcome, Mr. Um, Dr. Tin. 
<laughs> yes, he add um, another definition blended learning um, as to be face to face and online versus synchronous. Do you mean synchronous and asynchronous, Mr. Dang Tan Phim? The, yes, my Hương mentioned um, a reason why um, to implement blended learning is students feel more motivated. Yes, some of you also mentioned the reasons um, uh, for blended learning in your own definition about BL. Yes, Ms. Ho Thị Nhân, all its uh, reasons come so very, you know, appear so very quickly that I cannot um, breathe every single one. Enhance continuous mm -hmm. communication between teachers and students. Uh, fosters learning outside of the classroom and to be more diverse. So, mm -hmm. safe in class time and motivate students. Yes, thank you. And um, I would um, thank you for mentioning uh, the reasons why teachers should implement blended learning or apply blended learning in their classroom. So some of you mentioned the motivation, some others um, talking about the class time. Um, uh, so for quality class time used by the teachers and students, thank you. Um, and here are some of the reasons um, um, by um, Caffrey and Kaplan, and you see that our auth the authors um, agree with um, the reasons that you have mentioned. And let me uh, briefly um, go through the reasons here. The first one, um, blended learning helps teachers make use of the available technologies like your computers, mobile devices, internet, and online resources in their teaching and also students' learning. Reason number two, blended learning helps engaging students more. Some of you have mentioned this with uh, the use of technology um, allows teachers to combine different material types like video, audio, or visually enhanced presentation in one single lesson or unit. Reason number three, blended learning helps encouraging individualized learning. And some of you have mentioned this uh, with the information like readings and uh, video lectures that students can take home and watch or read in their own time. And also um, with online quizzes and tests, uh, teachers have more time in class. Some of you have mentioned class time, safe class time to facilitate students instead of, you know, lecturing. Reason number four, teachers can accordingly assess learners' trends and ask thanks to the reporting feature of some of the LMS and um, um, our moderator, uh, uh, Mr. Thuận, can share with you in details further. Um, reason number five, um, blended learning can help improving feedback uh, with the right tools and appropriate time. And not just the feedback from the teacher, um, blended learning can allow you know, quali um, uh, quality um, of uh, the peer review or peer feedback. And the last reason mentioned by, by um, the authors is uh, that blended learning can help maintaining human interaction, especially compared with completely online courses. So let's move to um, part number three, um, how to implement blended learning. And before we go to the steps uh, for teachers to um, implant implement blended learning in their class. Let me show you the, the levels or the signs um, um, that blended learning can be um, applied. So according to Graham here, as you can see that blended learning can be um, implemented from a very small uh, level like activity and course to uh, larger levels like a program or institutional or school level. And the first level will be the focus of our webinar today. Um, so activity and course levels of blended learning is usually initiated by teachers, the classroom teachers, with um, the purpose of improving their own teaching and students' learning. A program and institutional level are usually start with the school leaders and the teacher have to follow. 
So what are the steps to implement blended learning? Different people can suggest different uh, steps. And in this webinar, I um, select the framework by uh, Bailey uh, to introduce to you um, in which there are four steps. Um, the first one is condition, uh, create conditions for success before you launch brand, uh, blended learning. Um, the second step is plan your own blended learning in which you have to make key decisions. Step number three will be implementation. So you implement blended learning into your class and there are some keys to success to consider. And after um, the implementation, this, the step number four will be what to be done next to improve the previous implementation. So let's um, move to a different single step now. In step number one, create conditions for success. You have to define the acad academic goals of the term or the school year or the textbook that you are teaching. Um, condition number two is to build support. Do you need support from school leaders or from anyone else? And um, condition number three is funding. If there is available funding from the school or um, if you um, need to, you know, um, cover everything yourself. So please um, consider these three conditions to ensure the success of blended learning implementation. Then you go to the second step, plan. And in this step, you have to make key decisions. The first decision is about the strategy and timeline. The timeline here may be for um, a term, uh, for um, the whole activity to be done. For example, if, if you apply blended learning in a project or even the school year. So, um, what needs to be done every week or in a, a certain time. The second decision you have to make is to design the instructional models. So I mean the way you combine face-to-face -face and online or computer-assisted learning in, in one single activity or course, and we will um, discuss about number two later. The third decision is about platform. So which technology tool to use for that class or for that activity? And which content to be put online or which to be done offline? Decision number four will be about device acquisition. So which devices do you as a teacher need and your students as well as other stakeholders need to um, deliver or to implement the blended learning uh, model that you, you selected before? Um, the decision number five is about staffing. So who do you need to work with um, in order to implement uh, BL? Like, uh, do you have to work with other teachers or um, a technician person um, at your school or even with students or students' parents if, if you are teaching, you know, younger students? And the last decision you have to make is to how to measure the improvement or impact um, when you apply technology or blended learning into your classroom. So after you have made the decisions um, relating to six uh, issues here, let's go to the step number three, uh, implementation. But before um, talking about details of step number three let me introduce you to instructional model the de decision number two here so different people may categorize blended learning models um, differently um, some categorize based on um, the pot uh, the, the, the portion or the percentage of face-to-face -face learning or online learning within uh, one single course um, others, like a sticker and horn here, um, categorize blended learning based on the way that teachers combine face-to-face -face learning and online learning. And um, as you can see here in this framework, there are four models 
suggested by Staker and Horn, and this is uh, this framework is for K twelve, and um, namely rotation model, flakes, cell blend, and enriched virtual model, in which number two, three, and four are usually applied for you know program or school level and uh, it's not the focus of our webinar today. You can read more about these three models in the material um, delivered to you already before this webinar happens. And now let, let me focus on the first model, rotation model. Uh, this model is subdivided into um, four models as you can see here, station rotation, lab rotation, uh, flip classroom and individual rotation. And these models are usually applied at um, uh, activity or course level. So let me tell you what each of these model is. Station mm -hmm. rotation um, is the model in which within a single classroom, teachers divide or set the classroom to um, different stations for different activities in which one station is for online instruction and you can see that this model is very you know popular at kindergarten levels or some um, primary school um, uh, some primary classrooms the second model lab rotation is the model in which the school is equipped with one or two learning labs for different subjects to, to use together. And um, the classroom is still the traditional classroom. So in English teaching, for example, the teacher can bring their students to the lab for some online session, then back to the traditional classroom for other activities. Flip classroom is the model in which online learning usually happens at students' home. And mm -hmm. the classroom at school is still the traditional classroom. It may equip, be equipped with a projector um, or computer for teachers and students to, uh, for example, explain more about the, the, the online uh, contents or lectures. And usually students, before going to the class, students read the materials or watch the video lectures at home. Then the classroom time is usually used for other activities like a project and practice and Q&A between um, teacher and students. Uh, the last model in the rotation model is called individual rotation. So this model is usually for um, online courses. So most of the content and, and activities will be done online. Um, and the school is equipped with a central learning lab. Um, and, and then the teacher will design other face-to-face -face activities to help individual students. Um, as you can see here, they can be in direct instruction, group projects, and even personal trainer or seminar. So please go to poll number three after my introduction to the rotation model. Can you please, uh, based on your own experience and your observation of other teachers around you, can you please go to poll everywhere again and can you please type exactly the name of the model that you have used or you see other teachers use? We only have two minutes um, for this activity. Okay, flip classroom. I have uh, mm -hmm. seen the first response. Miss Kling, ma'am, can you send the link to the chat box again so that our participants can click the link and give the answers? Thank you. So our secretary have posted the link to the chat box so you can go directly to the chat box and click the link and send your answer please yes um you type the word uh, or the model in into different words so as you can see here the word classroom is the biggest one um okay so we've seen the most popular model that you 
are using as teachers is flip classroom, then lab rotation. Wow, also station rotation. Thirty seconds left. So please give your response. Thank you, uh, time is up and uh, here is the results. The most um, popular model used by our teachers is flip classroom. Uh, but other models are also used. Um, I think all of the models uh, use lab rotation, station rotation. No individual rotation model is used by um, our teachers here, thank you for your responses. Yeah, so we now move to, so after um, design, deciding the uh, blended learning model to be used and consider uh, or make some decision. Now, please move to uh, step number three, uh, three implementation. And here are some of the key considerations to success in your implementation. Number one is the first structure. So please consider what do you as a teacher need and your students need? Um, what do you have, you know, or your classroom have um, already? Like a layout of the classroom, uh, the school's Wi-Fi, uh, students and uh, computer uh, and, and teachers devices um, etc and consideration number two is how do you integrate technology and how do you combine face-to-face -face and online activity um, within your implementation issue number uh, or consideration number three is about professional development here i mean what do you need to learn more and what do you your students um, as well as their parents need to learn about the tool or about the implementation in order to be you know successfully joining the activity consideration number four is the support um, so during the implementation, if your student, um, their parents, or even yourself need the support, how do you support them? Or do you need others to support yourself or as well as your teachers and parents? And issue number five is about communication. How do you communicate with other stakeholders uh, during your implementation to make sure that it is successful? And these issues will be shared by our teachers later. Then after you know, the activity has finished or after the term has finished, please ask yourself um, three questions. The first one, what lessons have been learned um, within the implementation? And how is the impact? And how do you measure the impact? If your students' motivation is better, if your students improve their learning, etc. And question number three, it's about what to be done next. If you have a chance to repeat or to redo, uh, reapply the blended learning for the same class next term or for a different class, what needs to be changed or what needs to be done better? So please consider yourself these three questions. Yeah, so I, uh, so far I have introduced you to the framework of um, four steps to implement blended learning in your class. Again, before you launch, create conditions for success, then uh, plan 
you have to make key decisions about relating issues. Step number three is implementation of the blended learning into your class and some key considerations to ensure the success. And then after you implement blended learning, let's ask yourself questions to improve for the next steps. Now we'll move to our teachers sharing. So thank you uh, three teachers here for um, uh, accepting our invitation to share your own experience and your practice in your own classroom. And we will go, uh, come to three um, teachers sharing. Uh, first, we'll come from Ms. Huang Quỳnh from Yên Bái. Um, uh, here is Quỳnh and she will share about how she blend um, an activity called extensive reading with her primary uh, school students. The second sharing will come uh, from Ms. Bui Lien um, from Đắk Lắk, and she will share about how she blend her writing class uh, with junior high school students. And the last sharing will come from Ms. Chen Thuy from Hưng Yên, and in which she will share about how she blend a project uh, that um, was done um, by her high school students. So please welcome um, our teachers sharing and why you listen to their sharing, please ask yourself the question of which blended learning model is used by the teacher. So I will stop my um, screen now for Hong Queen. Let's welcome Hong Queen first. So let's welcome our second speaker, Ms. Huang Quinn, to share some experience in using extensive, in applying extensive reading in her class. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Quinn. I come from Yen Bai City and I'm a primary teacher. Today, I'm going to tell you how I plan my class in an activity called extensive reading. The aim of my activity is to encourage my students to spend more time practicing English at home and motivate my students to read more books. Excuse I me, can you, can you please uh, show your slides? I saw it already. And I um, haven't uh, seen it. I think that you should stop sharing and then share again and choose how to share. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, I, I will start again. The aims of my activity is to encourage my students to spend more time practicing English at home and to motivate my students to read small books. I also want to I also want to create chances for the parents to learn English with their children. So before starting the plans, I inform the student parents about the plan and I ask the parents if uh, them could help by uh, supporting their children with the technologies. And because my activities need quite a lot of books, so I asked the parents to contribute books for the class. And I also persuade them to buy books for their children. Luckily, so most, of my, uh, most of the parents are very supportive. Then uh, now I win. <coughs> I, I, after create, after creating the condition for the uh, for the activities, I think of how I do Fine. how I do the activity. And most of my class, cons, most of my class, is considered about ten to fifteen students, and we have two lessons per week. Each lesson lasts about two hours, so I use about thirty minutes for a. Uh, at the end of each lesson for the reading time. Um, I use Facebook as the main tools 
because uh, I think Facebook is quite easy and convenient to use. And I use Facebook group and the Messenger group. Um, each of my students can read two books per week in uh, about 30 weeks. One book is assigned by me and one uh, and the other is their free choice. Now there are four steps of uh, my activities. The book assigned by me will be discussed in class in the reading time. And during this time, my students listen, read along and ask for the vocabulary. At this step, I have to make sure that all of my students understand the content of the book clearly. Then I assign the homework for them. At home, my, it depends on the contents of the books and the levels of my students. My students have to make videos in which they may simply read aloud the story or summary the story. Or with the high levels of the student, they have to draw what happened in the story. Look at the then they uh, look at the features, retell the story, and they also have to create uh, a mind map and give presentation. And sometimes they have to make products. So uh, then after after video what uh, after that the videos of the of, after that they will post the videos in the class groups on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and I will I will give the feedback for them. In the next lesson. When I meet them again, we will discuss about the books they, they read at home in the reading time. And during this, during this time, we will, uh, we will discuss about what they did at home. And I also give them a quiz to check their understanding about what they read at home. Uh, to the free choice book, if my students have to read at least one book each week and post a video in the reading groups on Facebook. Weekly groups, teachers, parents, and other students from these different classes can listen, watch, and also give comment for them. Um, Uh, after some weeks of doing these activities, I got positive feedback from my students and also their parents. And I feel that uh, my students are getting better in their English. Yeah, That's all of my blended learning activity uh, I want to share with you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Huang Queen, for uh, sharing uh, how you blend, uh, how you blend um, uh, your extensive reading activity with primary school students. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen, please? And participants, uh, so through uh, Queen's sharing, can you please type in the chat box the model, a blended learning model that Queen is using with her classes? So can you give your opinion on the model of a blended learning solution that is being used in the class? Yes, and Mr. Phạm Đức Thuận um, said that it is partially flipped classroom. All right, if you have more um, comments, can you Continue typing in the chat box. Now, please, we welcome the second sharing from uh, another teacher, Ms. Bui Thị Lien, coming from the secondary school. Ms. Bui Lien, where are you? Where are you now? Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to participate in this webinar. And I'm just a secondary school teacher 
So everything I will share with you today is just from um, my real teaching experiences. As I share my screen, Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can see. Thank you. And you see on the screen, I'm going to present about how I use Microsoft OneNote to improve my students' writing skills when teaching Ding and Six news textbook. Okay, so let's look at the sample lesson. This is unit three, my friends, on page 33. And students have to write about their friends. They have to think about their friends' appearance and personality. And there are three steps for this lesson. First, I have to make sure the conditions for success. I have to define the goals in this lesson. I want to improve my students' writing skills. I want to increase my students' collaboration space and help my students learn from each other. Um, of course, I also want to save my time as uh, the teacher job uh, in, let's say, feedback progress. I need the support from parents, devices, and luckily, my lesson is totally free. The second step is plan. The timeline for this lesson is that students have to prepare in two weeks at home and I have to carry out the class in 45 minutes in class. I use a flipped classroom and um, I make use of Microsoft OneNote online and of course, free accounts and students don't have any account to access to the OneNote file. Just know the link and access to the link to do the task. Students will use parents' computers or iPads or smartphones to write their conversations. And I need help from the students' parents. I can measure my students' improvement by looking at um, my students' writing portfolios or the quality of my students' writing um, and, of course, the results of the test. Step three, implementation. First of all, I have, I have to prepare everything by asking for our students parents permission to use their devices second i have to create the OneNote file and share the link of the file to students by a letter that i i prepare to send to uh, students parents in zolo group and I also have to train students as well as parents how to use OneNote and how to use Viewer. And after my um, lesson, teacher and students and also um, student parents have um, increased their abilities to use TeamViewer and OneNote. So now let's look at our work in detail at home. 
um, teacher have to provide materials and instructions. Sometimes I can record my oh. lessons explanations to uh, to post in one note, and uh, students have to read and or um, watch the the lessons videos online, and prepare their writings in two weeks. Please look at the screen. This is the OneNote file. As you can see, there are many sections and each section um, is the name of my students. In each section, students have many units and it looks like a document folder. It's very convenient to store student writings just like a portfolio. And I give uh, my students instruction to do this lesson. Also an online and note. So student after reading my guide, uh, students have to type their own writings in their sections and read all those writings. It means that the writings from their classmates. Then they have to give feedbacks on the others' ones. Just like this. Let's look at student named Chu Ming Huang and unit three, my friend's topic. But this is his writing, and this is um, one of his classmates' edition. And let's look at some more. And after that, I read all the writings and the corrections above, then give it back. Of course, I also give um, bonus marks to students that provide qualified feedback. In class, I mean that the writing lesson in class, students have to present what they have known about the writing lesson and what they learned from the classmates compositions after reading and uh, correcting all those mistakes. And I have to summarize the lesson again and let students write down the note on their notebooks. I have to show and correct some common errors. Of course, I have feedbacks and bonus marks to every student. That's all my sharing today. So uh, if you have any questions, please ask me. Um, yeah, maybe for more instruction in using OneNote, please contact me. So yes, thank um, you for listening. <laughs> Do yes, you thank you, Lin Bui. Um, sorry, sorry. Yes, um, thank you, Lin Bui, for your um, sharing. Um, and um, yes, in um, Ms. Lin's sharing, she pointed out clearly that she used a uh, flipped learning as uh, the blended learning model for her writing class. And uh, let me just uh, summarize a little bit. Um, uh, and um, as you can uh, see here, um, the OneNote uh, is used as the classroom um, tool for this writing class. And she also used Team Viewer um, as the channel to support um, the parents and students of the technical uh, difficulties or issues. Because with Team Viewer, um, the teacher can you know, directly control the student's uh, computer. And also she used Zalo uh, to communicate with parents to instruct them how to use TeamViewer in OneNote um, 
yes, um, in uh, for this writing class. Thank you, Ms. Lin Bui. Uh, and now please yeah. well, welcome Ms. Uh, Chen Thuy from Hưng Yên. Um, yes, uh, she will share about um, her project uh, with her high school students. And let's see how she blend uh, this activity. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Ms. Lan Hương. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, many thanks, Ms. Lan Hương and the organizing team for um, having me uh, this chance sharing with you about uh, a project I use. Um, um, excuse me, can you see my the screen? I was there. Yes. Oh, yes, that's great. Yeah, uh, I'm going to share with you about the project um, uh, we've um, have done um, about um, save our life from harmful pesticides. And I use a revision lesson after um, each theme in the curriculum to support the student to do more, to learn more with the um, English and they uh, need to, um, in terms of uh, defining academic goals, um, I really want the student to, uh, um, by the end of the project, the student will be able to um, use English to communicate and then they can uh, you know, complete the tasks given by teachers and uh, solve the real world problems in their own community. And um, to make this uh, project uh, happen, I need the permission from my headmaster and the students' parents. Um, um, do you know, um, I have sent, uh, you can see in the chat box, chat box, the link of the summary of the you know, projects I've shared. And I hope that um, if you have time, you can watch it and you can see from the very beginning of the project, uh, uh, what we've done, um, what we've done and what is the uh, result or the products of the, my students. Um, uh, in terms of funding, there's no funding in this project. I just bought uh, the internet connection to the classroom and asked the uh, parents to allow the student to use um, their parents' um, smartphone. Uh, or some of them have some, some of them have um, um, their parents' computer. Okay. That's it. Um, in terms of uh, plan with strategies and timeline, um, we have five weeks for um, the project lasted five weeks. The first week we planned um, the diary, we planned the, um, the resourcy, and then in weeks two we build the knowledge. And in weeks three and four we creating uh, means um, we the students um, work together to solve the problem and uh, um, to ask the teacher drive question and then they create some kind of uh, left flat or PowerPoint or um, the handouts. And at the, uh, at the end of um, the projects, we evaluate and then we share. Um, do you know, you can see on the test box, plus way with the time life plus, uh, for the students to, to complete the tax for the project. Um, uh, with instructional models, um, I follow individual rotation model to support my students during this project. The revision, uh, the revision lesson was changed into project-based learning lesson. That's time for the student to um, work together and share and uh, evaluate um, the works of them and uh, the the work that I have done during the five weeks. Um, and the next part for plant is platform and, um, and content. Um, I also use Facebook group to um, connect with the, t uh, with the students. I also use Skype to, um, uh, to share the, the student, to support the student by uh, if they have the, a kind of uh, difficulties, I, um, I will call them on Skype and then I will um, ask them to share their screen and uh, support them by um, uh, 
instruct them the way to use. I also use uh, Sway, Microsoft Sway, and uh, even OneDrive to uh, for the student to um, uh, put all the products on OneDrive, and all the students can see the uh, result. And you know, as I've mentioned above, we use smartphones, we use um, um, uh, parents' computers, and um, of course, in my classroom, in my classroom, we have to have the Wi-Fi internet because we use Skype and we connect with other teachers and uh, students overseas, and we the students take turn to um, present and. Um, introduce about the projects and of course we have to um, Wi-Fi internet. Um, in terms uh, of staffing, I um, just need to work with um, the parents to get permission and um, of course the students, every student in the uh, in, um, in class 12A1 um, to work together and to collaborate. Um, the next part is implementation, and I want to focus more on this. Um, uh, in terms of infrastructures, um, uh, it's included Wi-Fi protect, protector in my classroom, my personal computer, the student's smartphone, and some of them had their personal computers or they bought from their parents. Um, um, in terms of integration i use uh, some technology in the classroom uh, for example skype sway facebook group and um, onedrive and they, they can evaluate um, on uh, via forms microsoft forms um you know it's a kind of uh, ecosystem of office 365 in education um the next part is professional development and it's a way that my students know how to upload files on OneDrive. They know how to share this, how to share their screen um, on um, Skype. So I have the kind of online training to the students, and even um, every Thursday afternoon we ha we, ha we are free, and I have the student uh, came to the class, and I, we have uh, the kind of offline training. Um, with tech and implementation support, um, I just um, need my student to master some simple tools, as I mentioned above, to um, know and uh, how to use it and how to create the products um, and that the teacher asks. Um, and in terms of communication, we, um, um, the, my students work with uh, different people, like we work with farmers on the field, ask them to um, finish, uh, to complete the survey. Uh, we go to the hospital to work with doctors. And of course, um, the students have to um, uh, ask um, their parents uh, permission uh, for using, the, uh, using the, the devices. And uh, even, uh, we even work with the um, overseas teachers and students. And uh, with this terms of communication, I think that the student can work with different people and they may know how to adjust or train the attitudes and uh, train the way to behave with different, um, with different people. Um, uh, you know, in the test book, you may see the, um, uh, the summary of the project and the uh, sway of the timeline for the project. And um, if you have any question, I'm very, very happy to um, connect with you and answer and raise uh, support in um, a longer way. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Chen Thuy, for your interesting uh, sharing about how you um, uh, do a project to um, allows your students to use English uh, to solve a real world problem, um, an, um, an environmental issues that, it, that happened um, just around the school uh, and it has the impact to uh, the community 
um, and share the way you combine face-to-face -face and online activities uh, within this project. And as you can see in uh, Thuy's uh, sharing that, um, uh, yes, she, okay, she um, conduct um, a project and then ask her students to share the, the, the project or the results of the, of the project to another um, class of students in, in another country. And of course, the medium of communication is English um, through the tool um, that it's Skype. Yes, and um, uh, thank you. Let me uh, go back to um, my screen sharing. Uh, thank you, the three uh, teachers, for sharing your um, practical experience. And uh, let me tell you more that uh, most. Bui Lian and Chen Thuy, uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. So within their teaching, they use a lot of, you know, Microsoft tools together with other tools. So if you are interested in, in, in Microsoft tools, these two teachers will share with you more. And uh, Quinn um, also shares how to, uh, to use social networking, namely Facebook, in, in her own teaching. Um, let me let me skip this line. Uh, let me uh, briefly summarize uh, our sharing in this webinar, the content um, um, of our sharing. So we have defined what blended learning is, the reasons why teachers should apply uh, blended learning in their English classes, and more importantly, how to implement uh, blended learning in our class. It depends on um, the levels of, um, of, of um, uh, the students that you are teaching and your teaching context. So thank you very much for, for your attention. And thank you very much, three teachers, for sharing. Thank you, our speakers, Lan Hương, Miss Quinn, Miss Lucy, and Miss Ian, for your really useful and informative sharing. Now it's time to move on to the, the discussion with our speakers. If you participate in any question with our speakers, please feel free to type your question in the chat box. Yes, secretary will our secretary collect your question and send to us. And now I'd like to invite our speaker to send question to our speakers. Uh, Miss Anne, have you got a question? Yes, thank you, Miss Mai Hương. And uh, thank you, Miss Lan Hương and the other speakers for your sharing with uh, great ideas about blended learning and your application of some ICT tools in ELT. However, I am wondering about what needs to be considered in applying blended learning. So, Ms. Lan Hương, can you help me with this? Sure. So, consideration, your, your question is about teachers' cons considerations yes. um, in um, applying blended learning in their teaching. Yes. Um, thank you, Ms. Uh, Lan, for your question. Let me come back to my my screen can you see it now yes yes and and, and before i uh, show you another framework let me um, show you some of the readings for uh, for you to read further um, and these are the articles relating to our presentation today um, concerning Ms. An's question let me um, show you a framework uh, called T and in this framework, as you can see that in order to, uh, for, in order for teachers to successfully um, apply technology in their classroom, uh, teachers need areas of uh, knowledge. Uh, the content of the knowledge that they are teaching here, uh, English as the language, the pedagogical knowledge, um, so teaching method here is the English teaching uh, methodology. And of course, your knowledge about technology, but how you, you know, combine these three different areas of knowledge um, 
you know, is defined, or is designed it with the context. So the biggest circle, as you can see in this um, framework, the context that you are working, that you are teaching. So you, you may ask me, what are the contexts? It can be, you know, the, 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 um, the policies or the rules from a very, you know, high level, like a, um, the policies from the Ministry of Education, uh, even your DOET or even the rules of your schools. For example, if your students are allowed to use mobile devices uh, in, in the classroom or not, and other issues like uh, uh, the available or the infrastructure uh, of the schools. Um, what technologies are available for you to, to, to blend your class? And also there are your students, um, their age, their learning styles. So a lot of issues that you need to consider before you design to implement technology as well as blended learning uh, to your classroom as uh, we have mentioned in more detail in step number three you have to uh, make key decisions so to ensure that your implementation of blended learning will be successful thank you um must uh, did i answer your question okay uh so thank you miss hương i uh, totally agree with you about that and I am applying blended learning in my class in this semester, and your ideas are really useful to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let's come back to our moderator, Ms. Mai Hung, and your microphone is muted. Thank you, Ms. Hung, for reminding me. Thank you, Ms. Hung, and Anne for your question and answer. And our participants, if you still have questions to our speakers, can you type into the chat box and we'll get back to you during the Q&A session. Uh, now, after listening to the speakers sharing about blended learning and the suggested ways for implementation, I guess that you are wondering what technical tools you can use to blend your class. Am I right? Um, so now I would like to find our facilitators Mr. Thuat and Ms. An to introduce some useful tools that you can use in your class. And uh, Ms. Thuat, can you start first? Can you share with us your screen and your suggested tools? Excuse me, have you seen my slides? Yes, already. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm honored to introduce to all of you today two useful tools for flipped classroom model. They are Google Classroom and Google Forms. These tools are developed by Google for Education. And Google Classroom can function as a learning management system, LMS. And Google Forms can be used as an assessment tool. And what I'm going to share with you this morning is based on my two years experience of using these two applications in my teaching context at Huawei University. And I found that they both can be combined together as a perfect match in any teaching and learning context. So, in my talk today, I will focus on two main points. First, I will mention the distinguished features of the two products. Then, we will move on to the emphasis on the functionality of the tools, along with examples of how I have implemented in my teaching process. So, Let's start with the first focus. What are the main features of these two products? First, they are web-based applications. Anyone with the internet connection can access them online. Second, they are developed to use as mobile apps. 
This means user can download the apps onto their mobile devices, such as tab tablets or smartphones. Third, Google provides these tools for educators at no charge. Teachers and students can use them for free. And last, as much as I have experience, the these tools are user-friendly. There's almost no difficulty in the implementations. In other words, the application is simple. Teachers can students uh, and students can feel comfortable when using the tools. So uh, that's all for the main features of the two tools. And now let's go in more details with Classroom, Google Classroom. Google Classroom is highly suggested for teachers of any levels. It is provide an excellent learning management systems and it has two outstanding features. First, educators can easily use it for creating and managing classes, assignments and grades. Second, teachers are able to give direct and real-time feedback. Here, I'll show you an example of my class using Google Classroom. There are 31 students in the class and the students are learning General English 3 in their first term of the second year at Bali University. As you can see on the screen, there are four pages on Google Classroom, Stream, Classwork, People and Grade. With these four pages, you can control all the activities of the class. So to be more specific with Google Classroom functions, I will show you more pictures. As you can see, uh, in people pages, teachers can invite and delete students easily. Teacher can also invite other teachers to join the teachings and managing the class. With Google Classroom, creating and managing learning topics is simple. How many topics depends entirely on your teaching need? As you can see on the screen, in my teaching context, I have created eight different topics, practical English, vocabulary, writing, listening, pronunciation, reading, grammar, and announcements. So in Google Classroom, delivering assignments is not complicated. Just go to the classwork page, click on assignment, uh, uh, click on assignment, and then you type the title, give instructions and set the points, due dates, and topic. And it's just final step, it just clicked on the assignment. And that's you, it, it, it does for you. So you can see here on the screen, Google Classroom help teachers track the student's performance easily. There is a great, uh, uh, there is a, a great page in which you can see who has done the assignment and who has not. Therefore, teachers can take immediate actions by sending notification to the students to inform about their uh, their current uh, inform the students about their situations. So you see here, it is the grade book of the class. So on the screen, I'll show you another example of uh, effective communication and feedback for both students and teachers. You see that I sent a student, uh, students a listening practice. However, there was a mistake in the assignment. Right after that, a student named Mai Chen, um, Mai Chen comment below, right after the, uh, right below the assignment. And the, the system informed me automatically about that and I made the correction immediately. That way, you see that Google Classroom helped me to enhance the feedback and communication with my students. So that's all about Google Classroom. And now I would like you to move on to Google Forms.
As I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, Google Forms can be a great assessment tool. It can be used with uh, different types of questions. Text, multiple choice, true, false, and matchings, and even more. So, and it can also be used in various topics, reading, writing, listening. So with Google Forms, educator can have a variety of choices to create tests, quizzes, or any kinds of practice that they want to assess their students. So now I'd like to share with you more example of using Google Forms in my teaching context. As you can see on the screen, this is a reading comprehensive practice with multiple choice questions. And, uh, and this is an example of uh, for a writing task. It is a very familiar practice for uh, K-12 students, right? It is the rearrange the words to make the correct sentence. And now is the example of the listening practice. The question type here is uh, filling in the blind, as you can see. And that's all about the Google Forms, a powerful assessment tool. So in my talk today, I have presented to you two practical tools that can help you to transform and flip uh, your classroom. And I hope that what I have shared can be useful and applicable in your teaching context. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tuan, for your introduction to the learning platform and assessment tools. I'm so interested in that, actually. And um, now, um, I am eager, Ms. An, I am eager to know what you are going to share with our participants today. Um, can you share with us your screen, please? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Mai I will share my this with me. This one. Okay. Okay. So, can you see my screen? Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm very happy to share with all of you about Quizzy, which is viewed as an excellent educational trigger in the language classroom. And I have used Quizzy in my classes for the last two years. And I find it really wonderful for my students. I guess many, many of you are familiar with and use Kahoot in your classroom. However, today I would like to explore Quizzy with all of you so that you may have another option for your class, uh, for your class and for your students. And before telling you why I use Quizzy in my classes, I would like all of you to experience Quizzy with me first. Um, as you can see on the screen, this lesson is from Tiếng Anh Sao Unit 6, Close Look 2. And in this lesson, after teaching students about the rules of comparative exactness, I redesigned the activity one in the textbook, which is gap filling into the multiple choice. So, dear all web uh, being a participants, can you assess the web uh, .com on your computer or smartphone? Yes. And after assessing this graph, you are asked to enter a game code, right? Yeah. yeah. So please type the sick number. Two, four, three, eight, four, three. Two, four, three, eight, four, three. Yes. If you're, if you're using your smartphone, please click join a quiz. So please go to the chat box to get the link. Okay, so I can see uh, four people. 
have access the uh, web already. Miss Lian, Miss Chiang, Miss Wen, a lot. Okay, so I have. Oh, it already. So you will have one minute to assess the web. I need some more of you. Wow, 10 already. So we have 11 participants already. 12, 13, Okay, so are you ready to play with Quizzy? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so now let's start. Let's see. So you can see the questions on the screen and let's choose the correct answer. Wow, you are so fast. Other people are so fast. <laughs> yes, I know they are so fast. <laughs> we just look at the answer, <laughs> not the stem. Wow. Oh, I see Miss Chang has finished. You and I see the expert. <laughs> Just because the interaction connection. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's why I have to go to the university today. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, so Miss May. Okay. So I we need uh, we have two more participants, Miss Ngoc Anh and um, maybe Miss Phương Cao. Cao Phương. They are taking pictures of Wellington. Yes. Oh, so we need we have one more. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I will stop the game here. Okay, so you have experience. Right. Mm. See your screen again? Yes. So here, can you see? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have exper experience crazy. So how do you think about crazy? Do you like it? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you. So with this activity, you can see that I don't have to waste much of my time to check my students' understanding, right? So what should we, the teachers of English, use crazy in English classes? So with the similar platform to Kahoot, Quizzy brings you and our students with a lot of fun in the teaching and the learning time. The second reason is that Quizzy, Quizzy is also free and symbol for both, teach, sorry, for both teachers and students. And you can publish your lesson and reuse them in the different classes. How, um, here, you can see that with this exercise, I have used it for 12 times and I share it to the other teachers. Importantly, with Queasy, teachers can get speedy, accurate, reliable and messy results from the students. Thus, the teachers can save a lot of time from checking and marking the students' results. And after each question on the whole activity, 
we and our student can review all the, an the answers. Um, another reason is that using quizzes, the students have to compete with each other because as you can see, you need to be as quick as possible to get the, to give the correct answer uh, to get the highest um, points. And after each session, the student can get the results on their own devices. And on the teacher device, the score of all students are shown on the scoreboard, uh, which may greatly encourage our students in their learning and make our lesson more engaging and interesting. Next, in each question, you can use pictures and videos to attract the students' attention. Uh, at the end of each game or exercise, you can download the results of all students for the later use. And um, you can also download a more detailed Excel report of the dat data. So here. So if um, you, um, so you can use this, uh, those data to make, um, um, uh, to support your research. Um, last but not least, we and our students can be more skillful in ICT. Uh, it is an essential skill in the 21st century, school, uh, uh, century. So what can English teacher use Crazy for? Normally I use Crazy for the warm up activity when I want to check my students homework and the knowledge of the previous lesson. Also, Quizzy can be used for the rough up if I want to check my students' understanding of the new lesson. And we can also use Quizzy to design the test or to assign the homework for the student to do at home. So um, these are some main reasons why I use Quizzy in my teaching and hopefully it is useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write in the chat box or send me an email. Thank you very much for your listening. And now I would like to give the floor back to our moderator, Ms. Mai Hương. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thuat and Ms. Um, for your presentation and introduction with some useful learning platform tools for testing and assessment and also a very useful tool for creating live games. And uh, now it's time for the Q&A session. Participants, uh, if you have question for any of our speakers, please type, please type your question into the chat box and um, we will read the question for the speakers to get the answers. Um, so let's see. Okay, the first question here is, um, can Facebook be a relevant element for young learners? So, Ms. Lan Hương, can you help us to address this question? Uh, yeah, um, thank you, Mai Hương, and, and uh, um, I, I don't know who raised this question, but thank you for your interesting question. Um, and um, I have received this question several times before, um, um, not up to now, but uh, so some argues that Facebook is not um, a suitable LMS uh, or a suitable platform or technology tools uh, for teaching and learning. But here and there, we can see a lot of teachers are using Facebook as a channel to um, create, uh, to, to do you know, learning and teaching activities, as well as to communicate with uh, students and, and, and parents. And to my opinion, it depends on the context that you are teaching. Um, in this webinar, you see um, Ms. Queen um, use Facebook, Facebook group and Facebook Messenger um, in her uh, blended uh, you know, activities. And uh, my opinion is, um, if it is not the formal class at your school, it's still acceptable. The more important thing is that you get the agreement uh, from the stakeholders so Queen is using Facebook with, with her own class. 
um, for primary school students at home, and you know that most of the parents are using Facebook. Uh, and if the parents agree to use Facebook, is this still okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. For yeah. And um, we have also some more questions from our participants. And um, one of our participants are interested in knowing how the speakers guide their students to work at home and how the teachers know whether their student work or not. So, do you have any suggestion for this question and to overcome so, so, uh, um, It's me to answer this question. Um, okay, you can have the other speakers to give your opinion first. Mm -hmm. So how the teachers can, you know, keep track of students in online activities? Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, I think that it depends on the platform or the technology tools that you're using. Uh, for example, Todd is using Google Classroom. Um, and, you know, after, uh, just, just right after there's a, a response, um, uh, or a feedback uh, or a question from students, he will receive a notification through his email. Right. Yes, and um, in, um, it also in, in Google Classroom, uh, when uh, the teacher assign, um, don't, uh, do not give an assignment to students, there will be you know, a, a due time for each of the activity or assignment. And by looking at the whole grade, the teacher can, can know if the student has submitted their work on time or not. And the teacher can also send a notification or personal messages to the students who, uh, who have not done uh, the activity, or who have not completed the activity. So it depends on uh, the different platform or tool that you're using. For example, I'm using Canvas free for teachers. And, and I think that this, this is a great tool that helps teachers a lot in communicating or um, uh, reminding my students' uh, activities and work. Yeah. Okay. And is there any more suggestion on um, the, how to measure the quality of the homework? Mm, yeah, thank you uh, uh, for this question from Ms. Uh, Ngoc Anh. And uh, what do you mean by quality? So, oh. Yeah, can you raise your voice, Ngoc Anh? You mean uh, the, the students may uh, cheat us, may ask others to, um, to do uh, the homework for them? Or, or, or do you mean anything else? So please carry fine. The okay, so please, no, I, if you still have a um, question on this, please type the questions to Miss Lan Hill and then she'll get back to you later. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Okay, right. um, but because we have limit, uh, limited times, so, Thank you all for your question and answer. If you still have the question, please type into the chat box and we will get back to you in the forum. And um, now, uh, you know that using a technology might um, bring you some challenges. And I would like uh, Ms. An, can you share with us some solutions to overcome the possible challenges in using um, technology in teaching? I mean, for blended learning, yeah. And can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Mai Hương. Okay, so from the sharing of the previous speakers and facilitators in this webinar, we all see that applying blended learning in, uh, with different ICT tools may make our teaching more and more interesting and attractive to our students. And from my own experience, I think that we have different teaching and learning conditions and the students of different backgrounds. So the teachers can choose the most, of, sorry, the most appropriate ICT tools or blended learning model to apply into your classrooms uh, to get the best results. And um, the second, the second point is that uh, the overuse of uh, technology sometimes make both the teachers and the student tired. And also the student may get bored easily if the teachers use one single platform or two 
um, week by week. So it would be a better, it would be more effective if the teachers design different interesting and engaging activities for uh, online learning. In blended learning and teaching, uh, teachers and students need to work harder. However, when applying blended learning, teachers and students should uh, set the rules together. Uh, for example, um, the time, the deadline for the submission, um, and in case the student have no internet connection or the computer or smartphone, how they will submit. Both the teachers and the student can come to uh, the agreement on the rules together. And lastly, when designing the activities for the student to study online, um, teachers should pay more attention to the activities which encourage the students' collaboration and cross-check. Here I mean the peer review, from which they learn something from their peers, uh, not only just the comments or the feedbacks uh, from the teachers and just to, feel, uh, to fulfill the assigned task. There's some ideas I want to share you um, from my own experience. Thank you very much for your listening. Okay, thank you, Ms. And for your practical advice. And now, um, we know that technology might have a lot of troubles, and so sufficient support is uh, essential. And now I'd like to invite our um, speakers to share some suggestion on follow-up activity on this. Um, Mr. Tuan, can you share with us some suggestions on the follow-up activities? Yes. Um, you yeah. can see your screen now. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much for your um, for your uh, idea that I, uh, for your opportunities that you give to me. I think that very interesting. Uh, this is a, a concern much um, from my part, but from all participants. Uh, uh, I think uh, a good solution. Uh, for the follow-up activity is to join the webinar room uh, with TSO website and here into the forum. You can also go to the chat box and get the link to join the forum. So to get it here, uh, VTA on the VTA communication page and this is the webinar. There is a series of webinars uh, and what we are doing now with webinar number two, online learning um, design and delivery. And in the webinar forum, there are lots of uh, topics for you to raise to question, to share your experience and learn from others. So I'll give you an example of what uh, what people are uh, back together here. Um, this is the questions raised by Miss, my teacher's name, uh, uh, Hien Nguyen. So she has faced with her teaching contacts with the great uh, textbook grade six. So as you can see on the screen, and right after she has raised her questions, she uh, she got support from uh, the organizers from uh, their uh, college and and uh, other teachers around the communities. So that's why I suggest that uh, join the forum is a very good solution. In the forum, you can raise questions, you can share experience, and you can learn from others. And when that's all done, we can create a good community for professional development. So yeah. uh, that's my solution. So thank you. That's great. So participants, you can go to the chat box to get the link directly to the forum. And here is the forum. Yes, okay, I'll show you again the link to the forum, but you can go to the chat box and get the, forum, uh, get the link. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tan. That's very convenient. Thank you. That's very kind of you too. Thank you all for your question and answer and your uh, sharing of the follow-up activities. And um, 
Um, how about Miss Lan Hương? Do you have more suggestion on this? Um, yes, uh, thank you uh, for your um, uh, suggestion of uh, for our participants to join the forum uh, to um, discuss more about uh, this topic as well as other um, issues relating to uh, your teaching. And here is another suggestion as a follow-up activity of this webinar. Um, this is for those who have never applied blended learning before into your classroom uh, and also for those who, who want to change the way you apply technology. Um, and this is, as you can see here, this is the, the step number two um, in uh, the four step framework that I introduced to you before. And uh, we would like you to prepare an action plan by giving your answers to these questions and you can um, share your answers or your action plan to the forum for others as well as for us, uh, for us to uh, uh, give our own comments. And um, after uh, preparing this uh, general action plan, you can start with selecting a certain unit or a certain lesson in your textbook, the, the new English textbook that you are teaching. And um, so prepare a kind of detailed lesson plan um, so we can give our comments before you actually implement it into your classroom. And we also prepare a template for a technology enhanced lesson plan for you. So you can download and, and, and prepare the lesson plan and, and share, it, uh, share it with us. Thank you. That would be so useful, Ms. Thương. Thank you so much. And, um, Thank you, our speakers and participants, for your contribution to the Q&A session and also the participation in our webinar. But unfortunately, it's coming to the end of our webinar now. And before we say goodbye, I would like to provide you with some information about webinar three. So let's look at the screen. I'm going to share with you my, uh, the information about webinar three. Okay. So we are looking forward to uh, welcoming you to webinar three on testing and assessment presented by Ms. Nguyen Thị Ngọc Quỳnh, the director of the Center for Testing and Assessment, University of Languages and International Studies, Vietnam National University in Hanoi. Um, for more information on the upcoming webinar, um, please visit the first link um, on the screen to get uh, to to go to the Viet TSO website for more information, and please be reminded that participants are eligible to achieve an E certificate of attendance by accessing the second link and complete the quiz and the evaluation form. It will take you, I think, a couple of minutes only to finish this. And for your convenience, we also posted the link in the chat box so you can get the link there. Thank you so much speakers for your really hard work today. And thank you our participants for your interest and active, active participation in our webinar. We are looking forward to meeting you again in the next webinars. Thank you again and goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you everyone and bye-bye. Thank bye. you for stay, stay, staying with us <laughs> till this time. Bye and have a good thank lunch. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Still Thank busy you. Busy chatting Thank you. in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you are still interested in discussing about the things related to this webinar, you can go to the forum as shared by Mr. Twat before. And we will Hi. send you also the